a lot of Christians are afraid to share their faith. And I don't blame them. Now, some of you might be thinking with that, no, Sean, you, you, you must blame them to not care about lost souls. Now, I would blame someone if they said, I don't even care about my neighbors or my family members. But what I said at first was not about a failure to care, but this is about fear that overcomes or overwhelms that desire you may have to share the gospel. And I'm saying, I understand the fear. Even the Bible is honest about it. We are given multiple stories in the Acts of the Apostle of persecution that follows the gospel witness. Jesus speaks of how he came to bring the sword, which will divide families because of faith in him. We aren't guaranteed a peaceful life in this world, but we are guaranteed persecution and suffering if we live for Christ. It would be weird if people read the Bible and weren't a little scared about sharing their faith. And I think some people might have a better chance to overcome their fear if we're honest that, yes, it can be frightening. And we understand that, but we also have ideas to help you overcome your fear. And one idea that I would suggest is a 1999 book published by B&H by William Fay. The edition that I have is one that was produced by the Gideons International and is the heart of the Gideon evangelistic training, which they have titled Conversations. The book is Share Jesus Without Fear. Now, my church is going to be going through the Conversations Evangelism training next month, so I wanted to read the book in advance. And after reading it, I believe that Bill Fay has some quality advice on how you can become someone who will share Jesus without fear. And so I would love to tell you a little bit more about his advice so that I can help you, and Lord willing, you'll end up reading this whole book so that you can share Jesus more often without fear. Welcome to Rev Reads. If you want to discover more books that will help you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, please subscribe to the channel in order to stay up to date with the most current reviews. Also, like and share this video to help others know about the work of William Fay. If you want more people to know about how they can get over their fears and share Christ more, let them know about this book and this review. In Share Jesus Without Fear, William Fay tells the reader about his own journey to faith in Jesus Christ and uses his own hardness and his own rejection of the gospel initially to encourage the Christian, don't lose hope when you're sharing the gospel and you are rejected by others. This is step one to sharing the gospel without fear. It is to see rejection not as failure, but as for a lot of people, that is just one step in their journey to eventually believing in Jesus Christ. Faye shares how, on average, a person will hear the gospel more than seven times before placing their faith in Jesus. That means that when someone says no to you today, don't take that as a failure, but you could be the first person in line out of seven who will need to share Jesus with them before they believe. Or you could be number four, or you could be number six. So don't see it as a failure, but see it as part of that journey to help that person believe. There is no such thing as failure when you're telling someone the story of the good news of Jesus. The next advice by Faye is to use Questions. And this has been repeated in numerous evangelistic books, but questions allow the person you are witnessing to, they get to share their own thoughts. And people love to hear themselves talk, and it takes the pressure off you. So Faye provides five questions that draw a person closer and closer to faith in the gospel. And the first question I think is really important. It is, do you have any spiritual beliefs? This is a great question because it serves as a way to gauge if someone is open to the gospel or if they're so hardened that you know the conversation will go nowhere and so you can save yourself some grief. Next, he talks about the power of sharing scripture. 
Do not use your own words. Instead, share the Bible. And even better, ask the people to read the passages in the Bible themselves, right off your phone or with a small Gideon-like New Testament. And make it obvious that this is not a message that you invented. It's not something your church came up with 20 years ago. But what you're telling them is coming straight from the Bible. He provides seven ideal scriptures to share. Well, I should say six ideal scriptures. I have some issues with Revelation 3.20, but I'll save that for my criticism at the end. Next, he has a chapter on the close. This is where, if I'm honest, this is where I personally struggle with my own presentations, and I like his a strategy of asking five specific questions that will help bring people to a decision, but I'd make some tweaks on the last two questions. Then he presents the importance of transitioning that person who now believes into discipleship, which is great because we're not just called to make believers in the church. The Great Commission is to go and make disciples, and that first moment of faith in Christ, a disciple does not make. To be a disciple, you need to be a daily learner. So we need to help people to make that first step to go from trusting in Jesus as their Savior to then walking as his daily disciple. So this is all really great advice in this book. And if this advice is followed, it should remove some of that fear that people have in their hearts that is holding them back from talking to others about Jesus. Now, here are my two criticisms. First, in the context of evangelism, I don't believe we should use Revelation 3.20. This is a verse about restoring fellowship between a church and her Savior. This is not about calling unbelievers to salvation. We should use verses about unbelievers coming to faith when we share the gospel, and this is not one of them. So this is just a small nitpick, but I think one that should be shared. Second, the final two questions in phase close are, are you willing to surrender your life to Jesus Christ? And, are you willing to invite Jesus into your heart? My biggest problem with both of those questions is that that type of language is not found in Scripture for an unbeliever coming to faith in the gospel. Second, I find them kind of confusing, especially for an unbeliever. How could an unbeliever, an outsider, possibly be ready or understand the significance of surrendering their entire life to Jesus at this point? And then on top of that, what does it even mean to ask Jesus into your heart? The Bible is clear and consistent that the grace of the gospel comes through faith. Surrender is a part of discipleship for those who have already believed. We believe on Jesus, who he is as God's son, what he has done in his death and resurrection, what he promises with eternal life and protection from perishing. And we should be clear that the gospel doesn't come to those who can live a sacrificial enough life, give enough money into the offering plate, or have enough strong, heart-filled emotions. The gospel is entirely the work of Jesus. So what we're calling on people to do is believe or trust in what Jesus has already done. It is not about you. It's not about me. It's not about our commitment to God. It is about God and the work that he has done through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, I got to say, even with those criticisms, I find this book to be overall very helpful. And even my criticisms, we're talking about two pages among 150. And I hope Christians, even those who might disagree with Faye on a couple of points here and there, that they would still give this book a chance and read it because this book might be what you need to build up your confidence or help instill confidence with others so that they can share the gospel of Jesus Christ even more.